Hello everyone, welcome back. I know I've been gone for some time. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who reached out and showed their concern as to my whereabouts. I did have some personal things to take care of. And to be honest with you, I needed a breather from this whole YouTube, social media sort of thing that was going on. Um, sometimes too much is going on and you just have to take a step back. And that's where I was. I did injure my cornea. So, you know, um, the pirate jokes were circulating as I was sporting my rhinestone studded eye patch, but I'm on the mend. My fibromyalgia has kicked up into high gear. I'm having a flare up and even though I don't look like it right now, um, I am in excruciating agony. But, you know, you learn to adapt and work around your situations. Um, I just felt it was time for me to come back with something that I enjoy, which is being with you guys. So first of all, I wanted to say thank you to my girl, Christy of Dead Cheeky for spearheading the Ascend Together hashtag um, for Women's Month. You know, last month, March was National Women's Month and March 8th, I believe, was International Women's Day. Now, for those of you who didn't participate in this hashtag, that's fine, you know, just because the month is over doesn't mean that we can't all work together to help each other ascend, help each other move up. You know, each one reach down and help the other one pull us all together. So I wanted to say a thank you to these women in particular who spent their time doing their recordings, sharing their spreads with the rest of us. Um, let's see here. This is not good. Oh, okay, here we are. Christy, I mentioned her. Shout out to my girl, Dead Cheeky. Beth of Owlcat75. Jennifer Pearson. Heidi Wildfeather. Jessica Starr. And Lisa of Tarot Alchemist. Again, thank you so much. And I will be responding with my own spread, Ascend Together. And when I do that, I'll put the prompts that Christy had come up with. So. Let's see, um, I've got several decks that I want to review. I'm noticing a trend lately for a plethora of shaman decks, shamanistic decks, shaman practitioner decks, you know, that seems to be the thing. Everyone is a shamanic healer, shamanic practitioner, shamanic venture, all of that, okay? So shamanism is trendy now, which is unfortunate because People are marketing on a spirituality that is so earth-based and so earth-rooted that goes back thousands and thousands and thousands of years that I do not believe that we are paying the honor and respect to it. But that's a conversation for another video. So I do have a couple of decks that I will show you. Of course, this is the, the hot topic these days. And yes, I colored the eyes brown to match my own um you know that's my personal touch and as i said the only saving grace to this deck and i'm not shy about speaking that is the artist jenna um, but i'll discuss that at a later date the next deck that i have is earth warriors by alana fairchild and I'm going to do a walkthrough on this. Um, you know, the previous deck that she had out, not the one to, prior to this, but the other one called Lightworkers left a bad taste in my mouth. It was very exclusive. I did not feel that that deck resonated for me, and I did not feel that it would resonate with a lot of my clients who are not... Um, so rooted in Christianity, so to speak. Forget about it being a light worker um, based. It was heavily Christianized, in my opinion. So I had a falling out with Alana Fairchild. You know, the love affair ended. And then she attempted to make a comeback with um, this deck. Can you see that? 
love your inner goddess and it is a potent deck you know she was making that comeback almost there but not quite um, my only concern was why not commit to the unibrow I mean if you're going to tap into that commit to it fully and that seems to be one of the things that we have problems with um, people not really stepping up and taking full ownership stand in your power do what you want to do but own it fully don't do it halfway don't do it half ass you know that tells me to just sit on the fence then I begin to question your authenticity I see that you're just in it for the money but I think Alana is on a comeback now because we have here you know the Earth Warriors Oracle and I'm going to do a walkthrough of this deck and I'm loving it. I love the energy of it. I love the vibe of it. And it's it, inclusive. Um, she got much of the terminology correct, much of the spellings correct. Um, she gave kudos and props to the various cultures that she spoke about. So yes, this is going to be a deck that I'm going to be working with shortly. And we are all familiar with Tony Carmine Salerno, and he has uh, a deck out in regards to peace healing. I'll show that one. But he has a shamanistic deck out as well. So as I said, everyone's on the bandwagon. Um, it's a current trend, current flavor. Um, in time, I expect that it will fall out of favor, just like fairies and... I don't know, gods and goddesses and angels, you know, human beings, we tend to be very fickle. You know, we need to be involved in the next best thing, the next big thing. Okay, so speaking of which, let's see, Patrick Valenza is coming out with an oracle deck, and I can't wait to see that. But in the meantime, there's supposed to be something taking place on April 13th, Friday the 13th. So did you get your shovel card? Because I got mine. Let's see, can you see that? Do we have this glare going on? I got my shovel card. And I'm a card carrying member, Grave Digger Society. Love it. So that's Patrick Valenza. Um, I have a couple of books that I'm going to talk about just briefly because I'm going to segue into the next video. I just wanted to say I'm back and I'm doing great. And I just can't wait to get back into doing a whole bunch of connecting and doing these videos and responses. Now, when I joined the YouTube community, um, I wanted to be like one of the cool kids, I guess. You know, I watch a lot of you guys. Even though I wasn't participating, I watched a lot of your videos. And there was a, so many hashtags going around and video responses it was just becoming too much it's not that i couldn't keep up i really didn't want to keep up um i wanted to do the jahari spread but then i decided your opinion about me is really none of my business so take that um i wanted to respond to Oh, I don't know. I'm not a pagan. We don't like to call ourselves pagans. So that video response I couldn't do. I didn't want to participate in that. Um, there's just a few other things that were just going around. Um, I really had to take a step back and say, you know, Osset, you are who you are because of your experiences and everything. Why are you trying to fit in? Who likes you? will like you and who don't like you they will click off your channel and keep it moving and it really doesn't matter to me at the end of the day why am i try to be something that i'm not and create discomfort for myself you know i was stepping out of that i was stepping out of my lane i was stepping out of my comfort zone with trying to fit in and that's something that totally goes against who i am I encourage people to be who they are. Now, I do understand that many times as human beings, we do want to fit in. We do want to speak up. We do want to participate. But that leaves you in a place of vulnerability. It leaves you being less authentic than who you are. You know, it leaves you possibly, oh, I don't know, trying to 
measure yourself against someone else, you know, your responses, how that's going to be perceived. As I said, it really doesn't matter um, to me. Just do you, as they say. Um, but, you know, all things in consideration, I am enjoying being here. Um, I do chime in and speak my truth. And that's going to lead me into my next portion, I guess, of this video. Now, if you've been following me on Instagram, I have, uh, I have no issue with speaking up against an injustice. And that was tapping into my word of the year, which is advocate. And I had to learn what advocate meant. It wasn't just for someone else, but it was also for myself. And I could not be afraid to speak up if something needed to be addressed. And I decided after mulling over something for a few weeks, you know, because I do like to see things from the great perspective, the grand overview, who it's going to affect down the line, I had to speak up in regards to an issue that is currently in play. And if you all follow me on Instagram, let's see, then you know that I'm talking about this and the horrific travesty that is a chapter based um, on some knowledge that was gleaned from I don't know where in regards to African spirituality. Um, I feel that it was an egregious malicious oversight but that could be me being a drama queen and so i removed my emotion from it and got to a place of just looking at the facts um, several misspellings several misquotes um, books that were cited were not actually referenced um, things were not cross-checked proofread it's just um, a horrific portion of the book and a lot of what has been written by this author, unfortunately, I'm sure is based on Hollywood. Um, she talks about Baron Samdi and not in a good light being one of the most evil deities to work with and how demanding this particular energy is. I mean, she did not shed a good light on African spirituality at all. And I believe that it was a misconception to believe that maybe people like myself would not look at this book. But the first time this book came across my path, Katie Flowers had done a review, mild review. She didn't go into it. Um, but she did talk about a book that she was interested in reading. And so I followed up by doing some research. And on the back, you know, it does say something that will pull you in. Let me read what it has. It says, this book introduces the main gods and goddesses of the past, their myths, rituals, and how they have influenced modern popular culture. Discover the feuding goddesses of Babylon. Witness the great love affair of the Egyptian creator gods. Travel with the West African goddess from the shores of Nigeria to the new world of the Americas. And with that, I bought the book. Because as I stated in my previous videos, anything that references Africa, I am going to spend my money on. So now, if you follow me on Instagram, I've got this dialogue that is taking place supposedly with the uh, president of Rockpool. Anyway, I'll keep you up to date on that. No matter, let's move along. Okay, so the next book that I am working with currently, two books actually, is this one. And Winter Night Here, <laughs> shout out to my girl there. She is using this book currently to work in tandem with this book. So in my next video, I am going to do a spread and work with this and uh, hopefully everyone will go ahead and join us in this. So that's just my welcome back. Well, I should say 
welcome back yeah i do say that i do mean that it's good to see you you know send me a shout out high five and i will chat with you all later have a great day enjoy your evening and i will be back soon bye